Jesus suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped, a crown made of thorns pressed into his head. Bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered up the hill to Golgotha. Each step of the journey getting worse, spit on, cursed, and mocked. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way, sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. God hears you and he is answering your prayer. The love of God is being poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Uh, what, what I want to show you on our Enoch calendar that we made previously is this, is what we showed that in fact what's happened is when you read um, Daniel 9, 2, and the story in Genesis 7, 11 about the flood, in Daniel 9, 2, the prophecy is of the 52 years of Jerusalem. And I'm, I'm going to show you that real quickly now and how it lines up. And we've gone over this before, but for those who haven't seen it, I want to show you real quick. Go to Daniel 9, 2. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of years where the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. OK, so he's saying by books, it's the number of years. So how many books are in Jeremiah? There's 52 books. So he's saying there's going to be 52 years for this per first part of the prophecy. OK, and then there's another part of this prophecy. And it says that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So there's a 52 year count and then there's a 70 year count. And where do we find all of this? Well, when we start on our Enoch calendar, when we start from the date that Daniel <clears throat> gives us the prophecy of 52 years, where do we find that? We find that in the six day war on June 7th, 1967, Israel reclaimed and took back Jerusalem during the six day war. So on June 7th, 1967, Israel took back Jerusalem. And when you add 52 years to 19, June 7th, 1967, it brings you to June 7th, 2019, but it says he has to accomplish it. And so when did he accomplish 52 years? When was 52 years completed? June 7th, 2020, Jerusalem completed their 52 years, like the prophecy said. Okay, their 52 years was completed June 7th, right here. And we've shown this in many other videos. So that's the, that's the first part of the Daniel 9-2 prophecy. Now, what else are we looking for? Well, we know that we're following the timeline of the story in, in Noah and the flood. So let's go to Genesis 7, 11. And what does it say? 
In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, the same day were all the fountains of the great deep broken up and the windows of heaven were opened. So the flood begins in the second month, 17th day. Second month, 17th day. Remember I just showed you we go from evening to evening? So basically the evening of June 7th is the morning of June 8th. So Daniel 9-2 prophecy of 52 years and the flood story within the same 24-hour evening to evening count did in fact start the timeline on these dates from June 7th through June 8th, the 24-hour period. They both started. The prophecy of Daniel 9 did in fact start on the evening of June 7th going into June 8th, and so did the story of Noah. So we have a timeline beginning. This absolutely proved where our timeline started from on the Enoch calendar. Second month, 17th day is the same date, same 24-hour period when the Daniel 9 prophecy of the 52 years came to fruition, and it, and it happened. And so where's the 70 years? Well, we showed that to you guys earlier, right? We showed that um, in our prior teachings and prior videos. And what does it say? We'll go back into uh, Daniel 9. And we'll show the 70 years. So the 70 years, it says that he would accomplish 70 years in the destructions of Jerusalem. And remember, we showed that already. We showed in our, in our, in our um, beginning of this video that it is January 23rd when Jerusalem completes 70 years. So this now completes the Daniel 9 prophecy. It's completed. But what we found recently is there's another 70 days attached to it. There's another 70, and we showed that at the beginning of this video. So this here, we started with the Daniel 9 prophecy last year on June 7th, 2020, which is the same day the flood began, second month, 17th day. And now we're seeing that it's coming to a conclusion. But what day does it really end? What day does the flood really, truly end? Let's take a look at that. Let's go into Genesis 8. And I believe it's Genesis 8, 14. Here it is. Oh, we'll start at 8, 13. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month of the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the face of the earth, and Noah removed the covering of the ark, and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. What's the very last date that Noah gives us? Watch this. And in the second month, on the 7 and 20th day of the month, was the earth dried. Remember the first day he gave us? The first day he gave us was the second month, 17th day. Second month, 17th day. When you look at the last date that he gives us, it's the second month and 27th day. So we know it's a year later. It's one year later when the, the story of Noah and the flood end. And it's exactly one year and now the story's completed with this being the very, very last date that Noah mentions in this story that he recorded on his calendar, which in fact was the Enoch calendar, his grandfather's calendar. It was the only calendar he had. He didn't have the Gregorian calendar. He didn't have a Hebrew calendar. He only had his grandfather's calendar, which was the Enoch calendar. And he recorded this date. Second month, 27th day. So what day is this really? What day does this really fall on? Second month, 27th day. Well, our dear sister Emma from the Sword of God, Discord, decided to work on the Enoch calendar. She continued to work on the Enoch calendar for 2021 because what happened, and I'll just show you, we have um, the Enoch calendar, which we needed to, to go on further. We kind of had it ending somewhere into um, March. And so we needed to continue on and see what's happening uh, for the rest of 2021. So she went on to um, complete our calendar to um, for the remainder of 2021 to see where it all ends. And so she did that. She, she put some work into it and she made our Enoch calendar for, for the next several months. And she continued on with that. But where brothers and sisters does this date end? Where, where is the second month and, and the 27th day? We need to find this date, either currently or in biblical history, as to the importance of this date. So let's, let's continue on with this. So when she made the calendar for 2021 to complete the Enoch calendar, 
Our dear sister Emma, she also made an Enoch calendar for 33 AD. She was just curious to see, how did the Enoch calendar fall at the time of our Lord and Savior's crucifixion and resurrection? What did the Enoch calendar really look like back in those days? So she recreated the Enoch calendar for 33 AD. And brothers and sisters, you're just not going to believe the very startling and amazing things that our dear sister Emma found when she completed that Enoch calendar for 33 AD. You're going to need to hold on to your seats and get ready for this adventure we're about to go on. Emma found some very shocking information when she completed this Enoch calendar for 33 AD that when she showed it to me, I just about fell out of my chair. And now, brothers and sisters, we're going to show that to you. But I just want to build on it a little bit more to give you some background. Uh, and then I'll show you the calendar that she built for 33 AD. So once again, we see it's the seventh, it's the second month, 27th day. But what, what did Jesus Christ say about this time? What, what did our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, tell us about this time, this story of Noah? Let's get into that real quick. And we showed this in our last video. And for those of you who didn't see it, we'll show that to you now. It's going to be found in, in Luke 17, 26. And our Lord and Savior tells us in his own words. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. I want you all to just, let's just sit back and ponder on this moment for just a second. Our Lord and Savior was talking to his apostles, his disciples, and a lot of people that were around him when he was ta talking about this. And what does he say? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the Son of Man. He's telling them what days it's going to be. When Jesus said it would be in the days of Noah, they understood exactly what he meant. They knew exactly what days those were. Brothers and sisters, back in those days, they completely understood the Enoch calendar. It was the only calendar they were using especially when they came out of captivity from Babylon. So they knew precisely which days Yahshua HaMashiach was talking about on their calendar. When he said the days of Noah, they knew what the Torah was. They knew the story of Genesis. They knew what those days were when he said it was in the days of Noah. They had it on their calendar. They understood it. You can understand, brothers and sisters, it's been over 2,000 years or about 2,000 years since our Lord said these words to them. Now, in today's times, these, these words may have kind of gotten lost in translation, but they've been lost because the calendars have been changed. But they, back then, when he told them it was the days of Noah, they knew what it was. Their calendars were marked. They understood what the second month, 27th day was. It was their only calendar that they were using. So they understood the days. Let me give you an example. For example, it would be the same thing if someone here in America said to someone else in America, yeah, it was in the days of Thanksgiving. Well, here in America, brothers and sisters, we all know what Thanksgiving is. Almost everyone in America knows the date of Thanksgiving. They know the history of Thanksgiving. We all know the history behind it. We know how the American Indians were helping the Americans that landed and they, and they were colonizing. We understand what Thanksgiving was. We understand the background and the history. We even know the names of the people that were back in those days of Thanksgiving and, and the names of the Indians and the names of the settlers. We, we understand who they are. We have those dates marked. We understand. So, brothers and sisters, when Jesus said, as in the days of Noah, the people at that time very, very clearly knew what days he was talking about. They knew what day the flood began, and they clearly knew what day the flood ended. It was on their Enoch calendar. It was in their Torah. It's in Genesis. They understood it. So, brothers and sisters, let me ask you this. Could there be a hidden 2,000-year-old mystery in the gospel that has been hiding? Could there be a 2,000-year-old mystery hiding in this gospel? Could it be, brothers and sisters, that at the time Jesus Christ said this, that he said this, that they did understand precisely which days it was for Noah? But now that since 2,000 years have passed, 
that these days of Noah have been lost in translation. They've been lost in history, so to speak. They've been lost because so many calendars have been manufactured and invented and created by all different cultures and different countries and different peoples. There's dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds of different calendars all over the face of the earth. Could those days of Noah have been lost in history and, and lost in translation? I say, yes, it's very, yes, that is exactly what happened. Brothers and sisters, the people back in those days knew precisely which days on their Enoch calendar that Jesus Christ was speaking of. And now, brothers and sisters, for the first time, the hidden mystery of that gospel in this verse will be revealed to you. Get ready for what you're about to see and what is about to be revealed for the first time ever in over 2,000 years. When we went to Genesis 8, just to review, because I'm going to build up to this. 8.14, and he clearly tells us the date, second month, 27th day. I want to show you something. We're going to slowly build on this so that you totally grasp the magnitude of what I'm going to show you. Let's go into, again, the history of Israel. When did we say the history of Israel began? As a nation state, when did they begin? May 14th, 1948. They stood up as a nation state. Although it was a provisional government, they stood up on May 14th, 1948 as a nation state for the first time. Now, let's, let's go into look at what our dear sister Emma put together for us. This is going to be what I'm going to show you now as the 33 AD calendar that she built. And again, it's the same Enoch calendar we've always been teaching on. She just built one for 33 AD. The lunar count, again, is still 354 days. The solar count, again, is 364 days. And they both begin on the exact same date, March 20, 33 AD. And she precisely calculated and calibrated this calendar. And we, we've realized that this is the absolute correct date, okay? Okay where she started the calendar for their new year. So this clearly is the Enoch calendar for 3380. And, and we're going to show you how it all falls out. So when is resurrection Sunday in 3380? Exactly what we've been showing you. April 4th, 3380, resurrection day. Resurrection day. And remember how it goes from evening to evening? So the morning of April 4th, the morning of April 4th was in fact Sunday in the morning. And then in the evening, it changed to April the 5th. So from evening to evening, day one. Okay. That's day one. Now let's go and count 40 days to the ascension, right? Jesus Christ resurrected on April 4th, 33 AD and counting one day from evening to evening. Let's now count the 40 days. There it is, brothers and sisters. There it is. Ascension day. When? Second month, 27th day. Drop the mic. Right there. It's staring us right in the face. The very day, the very day that the flood ended, 40 days of the flood, 40 days ends the story of Noah in Genesis 8.14, Second month, 27th day on the recreated Enoch calendar of 33 AD, Genesis 8, 14. And what day does it end on on the Gregorian calendar? There it is. May 14th. Drop the mic again, brothers and sisters. Bombshell. The very day that our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, ascended into heaven is, in fact, the second month, 27th day, as I just showed you in Genesis 8, 14, which ends the 40 days of the flood and also lands exactly and precisely on the Gregorian calendar, May 14th, the anniversary of Israel. You see what our Lord has been trying to tell us all this time? Do you see how precise this calendar has laid out? Do you see how precise our Lord and Savior's words are when he told them, 
in Luke 17, 26, as in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the son of man. These are the days of the son of man. These are the 40 days. These are the 40 days from his resurrection. 40 days, brothers and sisters, 40 days, as in the days of Noah, second month, 27th day, the 40 days of the flood are over. And there it is, the very last date that Noah gave us. And that's why, brothers and sisters, I am sure, I am sure, back in those days, when Yahshua HaMashiach told them it would be the days of Noah, they already understood this. They understood the 40 days would end on this day. It was on their calendar. And had they not noticed it, on the day that he ascended, they surely would have realized. They surely surely would have realized that day or some day later by looking at their calendar. All they had to do was look at their calendar, and they would have realized that this is, in fact, the last and final day of the flood where the story of Noah ended because they did have the Torah. They did have Genesis. They understood what this date was. They clearly knew it was the 40th day of the flood when the story of Noah ended. And now, brothers and sisters, we now in this time frame, we understand the significance of May the 14th. They didn't have this calendar back then, but had they had the calendar back then, this is the date it would have fell on, May the 14th. And we, brothers and sisters, we understand the significance of May the 14th, right? May the 14th, when the 40 days of the visitation of Yahshua HaMashiach has ended, the 40 days that we keep talking about that he will be back on the earth. And we've proven that in Luke eleven thirty, 30, where he talks about the days of Jonah and Luke 17, 26, where he talks about the days of Noah. We just went over that. And we went over Luke nineteen forty four, where he says they'll be laid even to the ground because they did not know the time of their visitation. This 40 days ends on Israel's anniversary, the exact same way, brothers and sisters, when Yahshua HaMashiach ascended into our father's kingdom in heaven, on the very last day that Noah gave us, second month, 27th day, when the flood ends, the 40 days of the flood ends, it now ends on exactly May the 14th, just like brothers and sisters, it will do the exact same thing. History, brothers and sisters, will in fact repeat itself this year again. I want you all to see this, how amazingly, without any flaw, without any skips, without any bumps in the road, this whole thing is laying out precisely day by day, exactly as we see it in scripture. Brothers and sisters, there's absolutely no doubt, absolutely no doubt that what we're looking at is an exact duplicate of what happened back in those days. And what I wanted to show you was this. When we went to our first Enoch calendar that we built, what did we find? I want you all to see this. What we found was the stories of the Daniel 9 prophecy began and the story of Genesis, the flood story, began on this date so that this could be a marker for us. I'm sure that our Lord and Savior and our Lord God in heaven made these dates fall the Daniel nine prophecy and the Genesis seven prof, uh, not prophecy, but the Genesis seven story fell on the same date as a marker for us. So we can understand that the flood is beginning, that the flood upon the earth is beginning, that the Daniel nine prophecy of 52 years and 70 years is being completed. It started here. But what I'm, what I'm firmly believe is our Lord and savior and our God in heaven wanted us to do was to recreate the 33 AD Enoch calendar to find the final date, to find the final date, which he was referring to back in those days as the days of Noah. He said, as in the days of Noah, so would the days of the son of man be. And here's the 40 days of the son of man ending exactly on the second month, 27th day on May 14th, 33 AD, which we know May 14th is in fact the anniversary of Israel. There is absolutely no difference of what happened in 33 AD, which is now, brothers and sisters, playing out exactly precisely what's happening today. It began on April the 4th, 33 AD, and it's ending on the anniversary of Israel 40 days later. There it is, brothers and sisters. April the 4th, 2021, Resurrection Sunday, 40 days later, the anniversary of Israel. It's an exact match, and only in this year. 
brothers and sisters, I am absolutely confident that we have found the date of the escape. The Lord wanted us to find the time in which he was telling the story. So we started off, brothers and sisters, as I showed all of you, we started off here. The flood began here. And I firmly believe what he wanted us to do was to recreate the calendar for 33 AD. And we would, in fact, find that the days of Noah he was talking about ended exactly on the day when it's supposed to. Second month, 27th day, when our Lord and Savior ascended into heaven. Do you see, brothers and sisters, Jesus is telling us that he is the ark. He is the ark that rested. Just as the ark rested on the 40th day, so did our Lord and Savior ascend into heaven on the 40th day for his rest in heaven with our Father in heaven. Brothers and sisters, this is an exact, exact match of what we've laid out in our current calendar and the time frame is a precise match of exactly what happened in 3380. was great.